you're gonna wanna watch this video, Castico. It's a newer product, I never heard of it before, but I installed it. I've installed bathrooms for 40 years. I did this one here behind me, subway tile, ceramic. But hey, join me, you're gonna, you must watch this video. If you're gonna spend all the money to do this, do it yourself. You need to make sure you do these key tips in this video so that your system doesn't leak when you're done. So please join me, Castico Shower Arcadia. All right, we're gonna install it today, join me. First time installing one of these. This is the, the shower pan, the curbless shower pan. Here are your stand up end panels. All right, here's the name of the product it is a Casteco, Castico, Castico, Arcadia. I've been to Arcadia, Florida. <clears throat> All right, it's a graphite. 32 by 60, left or right. I like left or right. All right, let's see how, let's install this. All right, Big Bubba's first. Now install. we're gonna red guard, waterproof the corners and the critical areas where there could be potential to leak, which I don't see much potential at all in this system leaking, but we're gonna do the overkill. All right, here we go. plywood in case anything gets through we'll do the edge of the plywood plus it'll give a better bond for the mortar i'm gonna put down a sheet of plastic some guys do that with this pan this pan is only one inch thick i don't know that i trust it to not break i want it bonded common sense tells me which really isn't that common that this thing can only leak around the edges so i'm only going to waterproof where needed now I put some fiber mesh in there to make it stronger. I know you could use this stuff without the fiber mesh, but I'm putting it in there just for an extra, a little bit stronger. We'll put on at least two coats. All right, there we are so far. I won't bore you, little, little weenie roller, little brush, waterproofing the critical areas. Okay, cutting the pan, thank God. It's February 29th in Michigan, and I'm out here in a t-shirt. What a beautiful day, man. We're going to cut this on the porch. Can't have the dust in the house. Client's not here. All right, let's cut her. I got a few questions here. Great client, Tammy, gave me this mask. Yep, I look like a duck, but I'm no quack, baby. Okay, let's cut okay. it. I couldn't decide whether I wanted to cut it off one end. I'd like to cut a little bit off end to make it more centered, but that seems like a lot more dust, a lot more work. If you look, there's kind of a kind of a lip for the half inch wall to set on. They got a little bit of a platform there, but I don't think it's really really. It doesn't say in the instructions to cut a little off each end. It doesn't really say which would be nice if it did make recommendations. So we're going to cut it all off on one end. All right, using these as a straight edge. I measured these, and they measure both of them because one's going on each end, like this. All right, so if you put them on here, I act, took the actual measure. I'm not trust, trusting the destructions. Always read the destructions so you don't need my instruction or you don't want to call those phone numbers and ask for help because you know where you're going to land in another country. So anyways, here we go. This goes on here like this. All right, let's get a better angle of that. It goes on like this. You're going to screw this on, but first we have to remove enough so that we have the right dimension wall to wall. All right, so this is how we're going to do it right here. I've got me a, I'm going to spare you the noise. Got me a tile blade in here. Put on a dust mask, protect your lungs. Second thought, let's not let's cut a it. test cut, see what she's going to do before you proceed on your final line. Bingo, baby, bingo. We knocked off. We had to come off. Let's hope we didn't cut too much. Wow, that stuff pretty brittle. This is 
the blade I cut it with right here, a rigid. I think I got this at the Home Depot for like $47 blade. Multi-floor materials listed. That's the blade I use, just to let you know. Sorry, I spared you the noise, didn't bring my stand. So that, it is what it is. Wear a dust mask, use the right blade, do a practice cut. Very costly if you don't. Okay, they're pre-cut, so you don't have to cut the length of those. These here, they fit kind of like tongue and groove a little bit, but make sure you leave this back one sticking over just 3 sixteenths, a quarter inch, quarter inch over, so that this will make the connection, the overlap, a nice seal. I think the whole thing's kind of cheesy. They should be telling you the silicone under here, but I'm gonna pack the silicone in after the fact. Make sure putting these screws in, you have your screw, your gun on low, not on high. You'll strip them out. But hey, I did a little bonus, my own little thinking outside of the box. I took some white duct tape, doesn't matter the color. I duct taped this because I know, I got a feeling. In a one man show, this is the only way I could figure to get this in here. I can get in here and do my mortar, and then I'll pull out the slats and gently bring it down because I'm a one-man show. All right, Mama always said I was sharp as a marble. But Bubba, marbles ain't sharp. Broken ones are sharp. There's our spot there so I can put my hand there so I can loosen the screws. Let's see if this ends up being the funniest home video. If I should do the front first or the back first, but this just seems more natural right here. So we'll do this first. Get the screw out the way. All right. Get the gun here. She's coming down. She's coming down, baby. Coming down like a ton of brick. Maybe now she'll lift. She might lift past that first one, but we'll see. All right, let's see. So this buttoned up against that flange is nice, but it's going to have to be siliconed. Ugh. Get this baby in there going to have to be packed with silicone. So, we're dang near got a funniest tone video. But how do you get one of them babies in with a one-man show? There you go. That's how you do it now. Like I say, I'll level this out, but then that's all going to get a bead of silicone packed through there. This flange and silicone's on here stopping, stopping it from leaking. Okay, all right. When mortaring down the pan, if you have a floor that's way off, first make sure you screw the floor down good. Make sure there's no loose wood on the floor before you mortar the floor down. But if your floor is like way off, you're like, wow, this thing's pretty off, then you might want to use a half inch notch trowel. Get a half inch mortar notch trowel and set it in a half inch because if you've got quarter inch dips, you need to fill that and then a little bit more. Three eighths inch dip, you need a half inch notch trowel. That's my recommendation on the paint. All right. She's level. She's on the level, baby. She's on the level. And that's all that matters. All right, there you go. A one man rodeo. All right. I'm making a pencil mark along my seam here. March on the back, arrows up. Cut this side only. All right, I'm gonna make sure the other one, if I do have to cut it, it's gonna be, you have to cut this, it's gonna be this side over here, this corner gets cut. So I'm gonna make sure, check those measurements before I go ahead and mortar this one on, but we're looking pretty good. Looks like our walls are pretty true. I'll stand back farther so you can see. We're gonna stand it up, we're just gonna mortar them to the wall with this in, same thin set mortar that we did the pan to the floor. Same sure thing. My panel is level, so I have a square cut, which actually I had to shim this corner over here 
stick a carpenter's pencil in there to level it up a little bit because at the bottom we have our little flange which act, adds an eighth of an inch so it helps throw it out of level if the wall is truly level and we are pretty close so keep in mind you got this half inch it's going to get buried it's going to get buried with the next paint that comes in so you got you've got like a half inch wiggle room but i'd say three eighths three eighths wiggle room and we're going to pack all these corners with silicone I'm gonna mortar it in silicone. Everything's gonna be sandwiched in. I don't like this flange. The flange is rinky dink. No matter how you put it on, it's rinky dink. Um, it's gonna to have to be buried. You're gonna to have to bury this bottom edge in silicone, go through a tube or two of silicone, making sure it's all, and I'll come up these corners every six inches with a good six to 12 inches solid silicone in the corner sandwiched so it can never leak. It's the only way I'm gonna sleep comfortable on this baby. This lower gap down here, it's gonna be filled with silicone. Silicone, baby, silicone. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm actually, I got a solid, filled the gap with clear silicone. I'm gonna set the panel down in it. I've also done a bead of silicone all the way up the corner, up to about this height. You know, you're not gonna get much water above that. That'll prevent any from going in there because I don't like this lip. It's, the lip design is cheesy. I don't highly recommend this unit because of it, unless you're gonna overkill it. You're gonna overkill it with silicone, pack it tight, mortar, water won't get through that, especially focus on your corners, that those are silicone. That's what you're, it's gonna come through the corner, it's gonna come through this seam. The rest of it's pretty much gonna fall forward. But most good pans have a built on lip, not a lip that you attach. In this fashion. Check to see if you're getting a good stick on the panel. Here's how you do it. Pull the panel back and see if you're stuck on both surfaces. Yes, we are. You might have dips. You might want to go a little heavier. This is a, a quarter inch notch trowel I'm using. Anyways, so yeah, pull the panel off and spank her back, baby. Don't be afraid to spank her. Spank her on. There you go, all right. Now I'm gonna throw some duct tape up there just to make sure it doesn't fall down on me when I'm cutting the next panel. Cut this with that blade. It's a little jagged, but this should all be buried. I should get at least a quarter inch overlay, which would bury that, but I should get more than a quarter inch. So, but I'll be sufficient with caulking. But yeah, I could use probably a better blade. I don't like that. A little more chipping than I wanted. I thought I read the instructions right to do it decor side up. But maybe it should be decor side down. Let me check the back side, but the back Lining side... Lining up these back two panels might be a little tricky. If you got a little whoop de doo in the wall, you might have to back butter a little heavier. You might This might have to float out a little to get it. If there's a twist or a warp in the wall, very easily these won't lay flat. So I may have to pull it back up, but I've got it cut. I've cut this edge. The panels are marked, which edge you can cut, which edge you can't. You can see it's chipped, but it will cover. I got a half inch coverage and I got a pretty decent. That's pretty decent right there, baby. It's less than a quarter. In some places, the eighth up here, I had to cut the drywall a little. The drywall's a little bit, so I, I cut the drywall rather than try to damage the panel. All right, let's move along. All right. Now troweling on, troweling is just something that's gonna take experience and time to get good at it. The more you lay, the flatter you lay it down, the more material it's gonna leave behind, or I'm sorry, the less. You hold it upright, you're gonna leave more material behind. I'm using a quarter inch notch trowel for this. I figure that's good. If you got bigger dips in your walls, you might want to use a heavier. You might want to go to a 3 8 notch trowel. Depends on how flat your walls are, how flat you feel they, they truly are. All right, there's a little tip on mortaring. I'm also running a bead of silicone tight in that void. Nothing on the edge, just back in the small void. I got some silicone. Helps seal it up. Just as I suspected, I knew there was a dip in the wall here. We're pretty good for the most part lining up the back seam. 
we were off slightly there, but I need to pull this out. I'm going to pull this side out. I got enough mortar behind it to support it. Pull it out, slip a shim behind it so that it's flush. That's what I'll do. Pretty now. good job flushing it up. I got a paint stick and a shim, so it's out a little bit. But there's enough mud down here. We got bond. We're flat over here. It might be floating a little there. I need to get this piece to come down. I'm still just a little bit of 16th off. But if I put pressure on it, it goes down. So I'm going to get something to put some here pressure on. Here we go. I found these great, if you're one of my giant pumpkin growers followers, these are great vine supports for the pumpkins. I found a bunch of these in the packaging. They're going to the pumpkin patch. But hey, for now, we're using one of these against this vanity. I'm not sure. I think they're replacing this vanity. They're having somebody else do that. But I still didn't want to scratch their vanity. It's up against the wall. Two by four. You're a four, gosh darn genius, Forrest. All right, there you go. There you go. That's why they pay me the big bucks, baby. We got her flush and tight. And now we can do this panel here. I'm and then three hour contact cocktail lunch where I come back inebriated and ask the client for more money. Stay tuned for that. All right, I needed to put a little bit of pressure on this corner. Wanted to suck in an eighth of an inch. So here's my backwoods yield billy contraption, put forcing it in. All right, think outside of the box. Just to give you an idea how I cut, here's a shower head hole. Just a simple ceramic bed. I think I got this at Menards. And uh, you just gotta be careful that you don't let it skip. There's no pilot bit to keep you centered. Use your hand as a guide and make sure it can't jump on you. All right, then down here, I use my grinder. Doesn't that look pretty? It ain't pretty circle like some of you like that perfection, but it'll work. And then I transfer to the backside and now I'll remove it. Carefully remove it. Your handyman will know you hacked it out with a grinder blade. All right, because it's covered with trim and buried forever. But if you're that anal kind of guy, oh no, it's got to be a perfect hole. Like the guy that won't lay a chip tile under a toilet. If you're that guy, then you go buy that expensive bit. But I ain't about all that. I'm about, if it's, if it's good enough, it's good enough that you'll be look good when I'm completed, then it's good enough. I'm not worried about what the plumber's going to think five years from now. don't really care what he's going to looks good for my house. It looks good at 55. How many times have you heard that? Nonsense, kind of come out of some butcher hack's mouth. You know, so a lot of guys, come on, let me hear it. That's a hack job. All right, last panel, baby. Woohoo! Get the bottom in. This is definitely be better with two guys, trust me, but there ain't no help around here. There we go. And we got her. The top looks good. She looks good like I knew that she would. Smack daddy, baby. Smack daddy. Get the bottom in. All right. That's it. We'll wrap her up. Come back Monday and do the glass panel. Okay, installer tip. I'm pretty good on my shower head hole. I'll be fine. We're a little bit off, but it'll work. The discussion will cover. This here is way too tight. However, I'm not going to mess with it right now for fear. If I mess with this now, I could break this panel. It could crack in half. Let's get it mortared to the wall. And I'm coming back Monday. And Monday, after it's good and dry and bonded the wall, I can go ahead and clean it out with a router. I can take a router or whatever, chisel file and clean that out but to mess with it now i'm risking cracking the panel so it's all sweet we got our pattern lined up our pattern looks good lined up make sure you do that with this kit and all right there you go we'll come back monday and do the glass panel a little glass wall panel and then there's no door just to walk in low curb
glass panel went up. Probably the easiest thing I've ever installed in my life. All you had to do is make sure that you put the mitered metal down because it is spaced. You could put this miter down here in the up position. They're spaced exactly the same, so you could install that upside down. It's possible. Once you drill the holes, you can flip it around. I did it. I accidentally flipped it around. And the holes line up the same both ways. That's crazy. But anyways, it actually installs quite well. I actually silicone the channel, the bottom of it, and I siliconed behind this channel for a better bond and a better seal. The instructions don't say to do that, but that's what I did. I ran a little eighth inch bead so it wasn't real messy. And now we will silicone everything in and put the trim on. We have to caulk, so we have that. You're gonna have that unless you finally grind these down. Good luck with that. If you wanna finally grind those down and shave them and take a chance at not damaging these panels, good luck with that. You can do that if you like. I will fill it with silicone. It'll look beautiful. Actually, this glass panel went in quicker than this fancy rain head shower. Hooking up the drain is a challenge. It is lots of pipes in my way. I'm doing the loop doggy dog around that copper valve. We're running over here. Okay, now I gotta get her to connect into here. All right, I'm no plumber, I'm the plumber's son. I'll plug the hole till the plumber comes. I have an IQ test, I bought all these fittings and now we will, we will make it work. When sealing the corners, you're gonna want to do a nice bead. I'll show you in a second, but you want to tool this with your finger. And when you wanna put the gun tip I like that angle right there. There's more than one way to do this. You ride your angle. Take your time with the gun, giving it time to fill the void. And then we come back with our finger, pushing it in, making a three point contact. Taking a wet finger, these are just simple wipes and running a wet finger down it which is forcing it back in, creating a three-point contact. and the excess off as needed. Not really a big fan of the screw-on lip. You've got a silicone sandwich, all these panels in silicone, folks. You're going to back silicone it. Then you're going to sell it according to it again on the surface. Carefully tool when you caulk it. Use your finger. Make sure you tool that caulk and push it back in the voids for a good three-point contact. Very critical in installing this type of stuff. All right. Join us at Keep It A Secret Home and Garden on YouTube for growing giant pumpkins, remodeling, and more. Bubba's Fish Clips. Jack and Bubba, join us.